everybody, Joe Joseph here, and this is the DailySheeple.com's Daily News Brief. Uh, one man that I hold in very high regard is the Rutherford Institute's John Whitehead. He's a excellent author, uh, lawyer, and uh, rights activist out there that just really tells it the way he sees it. Maintaining objectivity is paramount if we're going to have any sort of accountability as we go forward, okay? Yesterday, I talked about Betsy Davos and the fact that she is really, <clears throat> I thought, if you're going to continue to have the Department of Education, then you definitely want to break the power that the National Education Association has over the education system. That is extremely important as we go forward because that's the only way we're going to see any sort of positive change in this country is if we start now with the children because prior generations have seen just a continual decline and it's evident in the numbers as I went over yesterday. But today I want to talk about the police state because this is one of those things where I'm critical of Donald Trump. Because he has been documented in the past as being in favor of nationwide stop and frisk, which of course totally and completely violates a person's constitutional, a person's human rights, let alone constitutional rights. And then he issued, of course, these executive orders strengthening and encouraging the police state. I'm sure that the 1033 program and other programs like it will get a boost under President Trump. But the Daily Sheeple mirrored his latest piece, uh, Mr. Whitehead, the illusion of freedom, the police state, continues. And he always starts out his stuff with a quote, and he says, what happened here was a gradual habit, to the habituation of the people, little people, to be governed by surprise, to receive decisions deliberated in secret, to believe that the situation was so complicated that the government had to act on information which the people could not understand, or so dangerous that even if the people could understand it, it could not be released because of national security. This separation of government from people, this widening of the gap, took place so gradually and so insensibly that each step disguised perhaps not even intentionally, as a temporary emergency measure or associated with true patriotic allegiance or with some social purposes. And all the crises and all the reforms, real reforms too, so occupied the people that they did not see the slow motion underneath of the whole process of government growing remoter and remoter. And that was historian Milton Mayer who wrote that and they thought they were free, the Germans from 1933 to 1945. So he starts off, he says, brace yourself. And I've said this too, because this is how things historically started out pre-World War II Germany. And we have to be very careful to maintain our objectivity as we move forward and again, not fall prey to the cult of personality. Now, it says, there's something to be concocted in the dens, there's something being concocted in the dens of power far beyond the public eye. And it doesn't bode well for the future of this country. Anytime you have an entire nation so mesmerized by the antics of a political ruling class that they are oblivious to all else, you'd better beware. Anytime you have a government that operates in the shadows, speaks in a language of force and rules by fiat, you'd better beware. And any time you have a government so far removed from its people as to ensure that they are never seen, heard, or heeded by those elected to represent them, you'd better beware. Because the world, my friends, have been, has been down this, world, this road before. Now he continues, he says, as, history, as historian Milton Mayer recounts in his Seminal book on Hitler's rise to power, they thought they were free. Quote, most of us didn't want to think about fundamental things and never had. There was no need for them. 
Nazism gave us some dreadful fundamental things to think about. We were decent people and kept us so busy with continuous changes and crises and so fascinated, yes, fascinated by the machinations of the national enemies without and within that we had no time to think about these dreadful things that were going, that were growing little by little all around us. And we, my friends, are now at our most vulnerable. John writes, the gravest threat facing us as a nation is not extremism delivered, by the way, by uh, uh, of sovereign citizens or, or radicalized Muslims, but despotism exercised by a ruling class whose only allegiance is to power and money. Nero fiddled while Rome burned. America is burning. And almost all Americans and all we can do is switch the channel. Tune out what they don't want you to hear or what we don't want to hear and tune in to their own personal echo chambers because we're really in a national state of denial. And he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. He says, yet no amount of escapism can shield us from the harsh reality that the danger in our midst is posed by an entrenched government bureaucracy that has no regard for the Constitution or for Congress or the courts or even the citizenry. If the team colors have changed from blue to red, that's just cosmetic. The playbook remains the same. The leopard has not changed its spots. Scrape off the surface layers and you'll find that the American police state is alive and well and continuing to wreak havoc on the rights of the American people. See, we the people are no longer living the American dream. See, we live the American lie. Indeed, Americans have been lied to so sincerely, so incessantly, and for so long by politicians of all stripes who lie compulsively and without any seeming remorse but they've almost come to prefer the, the lies trotted out by the government over less palatable truths. Think about it, folks. Most people don't like to feel bad. They don't like things that make them feel like crap. Or a lot of times people just don't like confrontation. And as a result, we shy away from things that may be uncomfortable. I mean, it's true. And there are some uncomfortable truths that we need to face here in the United States. And one of them is the police state. I mean, we have to confront this. We have to go and take a look at the body again. What is it that this administration is doing? What is their body of work? And if you take a look, there are some really good things that are taking place. And there are some really bad things that are taking place. And the really bad things that are taking place, unfortunately, have far more sweeping effects on our daily lives right now than the good things. Because the good things, really, I mean, they're, like I said, they're crumbs. And I've said it in the past. They'll throw you crumbs to make you feel good. But meanwhile, behind the scenes, look at what's going on. It says the American people have become compulsive believers. As Nick Cohen writes for The Guardian, quote, compulsive liars shouldn't frighten you. They can harm no one if no one listens to them. Compulsive believers, on the other hand, they should terrify you. Believers are the liars enablers. Their vote gives them demagogue, gives the demagogue his power. Their trust turns the charlatan into a president. Their cred the credulity ensures that the propaganda of half-calculating and half-mad fanatics has the power to change the world. Now, while telling the truth in a time of universal deceit is, as George, well, uh, George Orwell concluded, a revolutionary act, believing the truth, and being able to distinguish the truth from a lie is also, my friends, a, res a, a, rev a revolutionary act. And if you think about what's going on and how people have so bought into the personality of Donald Trump. Okay. Again, I am a neutral party when it comes to any president. I judge them based on their merits. What have you done? It's what have you done for me lately? Right? That's the way it always is. If you work, if you're in business, what have you done for me lately? 
That's what rules the day. What have you done for me lately? So you have to take a look. He's done some good things. He's done some bad things. But he looks to enable the police state. You know? And it's winning. The police state's winning. We're losing. The American people are losing. You know? You want to bring a nationwide stop and frisk? That means that everything prior to that is going to stay in place. John writes, police haven't stopped disregarding the rights of citizens. Having been given the green light now to probe, poke, pinch, taser, search, seize, strip, shoot, and generally manhandle anyone they see fit in almost any circumstance, all with the general blessing of the courts, American law enforcement are no longer mere servants of the people entrusted with keeping the peace. Indeed, they continue to keep the masses corralled under control and and treated like suspects and enemies rather than citizens. Look, even today, I mean, today now more than ever, you have language out there, and language is very powerful, but you have the police now calling you civilians, calling you civilians as if they're military. Why? Because they're militarized. That's what's happened over the course of the last 15 to 20 years is you've seen the militarization of the police state through the 1033 program and other programs that transfer this military equipment to your police at no cost under the guise of fighting terrorism. And the SWAT teams are not going to stop crashing through the doors and terrorizing families. And the Pentagon and the Department of Homeland Security They're not going to stop militarizing and federalizing local police. And that's what they're doing, you know, via these programs. And the schools, the schools aren't going to stop treating young people like hardcore prisoners. Think about it. I talked about education yesterday, but one thing I didn't talk about was the prison culture that is preeminent in schools and public schools today. Think about it, you know. Everything is, like I said, ring the bell, go here, go there. You have uh, lockdown drills. You know, at least when I was in high school, there was no lockdown drills or, or, you know, primary school. There was nothing like that. I mean, they just began uh, school resource officers, SROs they're called, when I was in high school. And even that at the time was considered radical. Now it's commonplace to have the police embedded in all the schools. And of course, children have become uh, used to seeing them there. So eh, no more shock factor. It's now become accepted and it shouldn't be accepted. But of course, because the education system has gone down the tube, so has society. And as a result, There are a lot of dangers out there today that didn't exist when I was a kid, when my parents were kids. But this is all done for a reason. And it's to keep you under the thumb. And really, what has President Trump done? You know, like I said, he's done good, he's done bad. But one thing that he does is he provides a distraction for a lot of this stuff to go on just because he's a very polarizing individual. He's a very... um, He likes the attention. He loves the attention. I mean, he's a narcissist. But people knew that going into it, that Trump is a narcissist, that his ego is important to him. I mean, the alternatives? They they didn't really give us any good alternatives in this election. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, we just do what we got to do. By the way, you know, some things that have not stopped still since President Trump has taken office. The for-profit prisons, the private prisons, they haven't stopped locking up Americans and immigrants alike at at taxpayer expense. As a matter of fact, the locking up of immigrants is going to get a whole lot faster now under a President Trump. The private prisons are going to get a big boost, a big boost under President Trump. If the police state gets a boost, they start to arrest more people. President Trump's into the war on drugs, likes to make sure the CIA's making money. Hey, so let's go. Let's arrest more people. Let's feed that private prison industrial complex because you got to remember you got some billion dollar bubbas in the private prison uh, system there that want to keep it going. And those billionaires, there's not many of them and they talk. 
It's all about business, money, and power. The censorship, that's not going to stop. That's not going to stop. Now you've got the fake news, right? The Washington Post and the CNNs and all that. Look, they can put out whatever they want. People need to be able to choose to go to wherever they want to listen to what they want. And again, let people use their discernment to figure it out. Just because CNN puts out fake news doesn't mean that you have to shut them down. I wouldn't shut them down. Don't shut down CNN, Fox News, all that. No, let them go. They're digging their own hole. <laughs> They've done dig their own hole. Just let the free market take care of it, you know? And that's really what should happen. Independent media and alternative media, we're, we're all still, you know, we're censored. They don't want us to get out, but we do anyway because we just overwhelm them with sheer numbers. Look, there's no way I think that they can win, but boy, they, they're going to try. They're going to try. By the way, the courts are marching in lockstep with the police state, John Whitehead continues. He says the courts continue to do be dominated by technicians and statists who are deferential to authority, whether it be government or business. Absolutely true. Also, government bureaucrats haven't stopped turning American citizens into criminals. Look at the Department of uh, the, the Drug Enforcement Agency and the Bureau of Land Management and all of that. I mean, here you have American citizens just standing up for their rights and just being totally steamrolled by a just a, a bureaucratic juggernaut with deep pockets that can just kill you and drown you and legislation or litigation and all this stuff. I mean, it's, it's killing us. It's killing us. Then you have the surveillance state, you know, they haven't stopped spying on Americans and all our communications and transactions or movements. Look what just happened to uh, Michael Flynn. I mean, the surveillance state affected Trump directly. You would think that he would want to do something about it. And I hope he does. I truly do. And also, the TSA hasn't stopped groping or oogling and, you know, touchy-feely the uh, travelers. They love it. They want more of it. And they're still going to do it, and it's still going to continue, even though it's ineffective, even though everywhere they get tested, they fail, even though they just let 11 people through without even being t inspected. I mean, the security's a joke. And if you take a look at who they've encouraged to hire, I mean, ex-cons, all this kind of stuff into these positions where your, your quote, security is at, you know, at stake, I'd be very concerned. And I would want more accountability. I mean, these are all things that are very, very important to think about. And unfortunately, if you're so caught up in Trump, the personality, and Trump, the reality TV show, then you're not going to see what's going on behind the scenes. And it's very important that we maintain our focus and our objectivity because if we don't do that, folks, we're going to be in very, very, very deep trouble. More trouble now, uh, more trouble than we are in now. And we're in trouble now. So just keep that in mind as we move forward and we see what the Trump administration has in store. For us Americans here in these United States. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's Daily News Brief, and I'll have one again for you tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. Take care.